This is Emma. I thought of making a detailed tutorial about this piece because it happened to be the best illustration of how correct hand movements make it so easy to achieve accuracy in jumps, how correct intonation of staccato helps hands stay light and at ease, yet making perfect, gentle, clear sound. How phrasing helps distribute energy and increase speed of playing very easy, very effortlessly and how smart way of practicing on the learning stage helps you overcome a fear of playing this piece in fast tempo <laughs> I myself have never played this piece before um, I did practice though it a bit just to prepare this tutorial so the performance <laughs> <laughs> the performance at the end of the video is not the result of days and hours of practicing, but the matter of 10-15 minutes. And you can do the same if you just follow this tutorial and you know, with, with a little preparation. Um, I'm planning to make uh, 10 parts in this tutorial. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And every part will include imagination, fingering, hand arrangement, <laughs> I'm sorry guys. Um, so every part will include imagination, fingering, hands um, arrangement, substitution, I don't know how correct we call it, pedal marks, wrist uh, and elbow movements, articulations, phrasing, image, time uh, and learning stage. And also musical speech, yeah. So, um, also, um, just a little note. I'm probably gonna take it uh, very easy and record it in a very lazy way because um, I practiced a bit this morning and this melody already stuck in my mind and that just drives me crazy. I, I don't know, it's, it feels like I'm connected to some energy that I don't like. So, um, no offense for those who really like this piece, I'm sorry. Um, so, mm, I'm still gonna make it, but maybe just uh, one video in a week and two weeks, something like this. Um, because it's really just a good example of how piano well system works. So, I will make it eventually. All right, um, that being said, let's get started. Um, first thing first, um, I'm gonna take my bloody orange, <laughs> I'm gonna dip finger seeds in the orange juice because I'm really just gonna show you guys how I'm practicing at home. This is my cat. <laughs> she, I think, is very bored. Amy is very bored. Okay, so I dip it a little bit, no harm. Smells nice. Good. Um, uh, why I'm doing this? Because um, I have dry skin of my fingertips, and that creates slippery slipperiness on the fingertips, and that always creates unnecessary tension in my hand, just to be able, you know, to stay on the key, to um, how you call it, to grip to the key. So I don't want this, and this is kind of kind of the last thing I want to feel when I'm playing all these huge leaps and fast tempo. All right, so um, we're going to start with imagining notes in timbre or sound texture with movement and glissando 
And for those who don't know anything about it, there is a link in the description below. Don't be lazy, check it out. So, imagining in Timber's movement, Ian Glissande is very important because imagination creates sound that is right around your hand. It's kind of like above your hand. And when you touch a key, you touch basically sound over here. So you, if you imagine a certain sound, you kind of just touch the sound. So as a result, you play in the middle of the key, not pressing a key till the end, till the key bed. And uh, also you avoid heavy and clumsy tone production. Uh, that is, again, the last thing we want to have in this quick lips uh, and with playing with this clear sound. So um, you can choose simply beautiful violins, not necessarily pizzicato guys, because um, you will achieve staccato through internal singing just some minutes later. So you can just imagine beautiful violins uh, with glissando with movement or again sound texture, again it's your choice. So uh, move sound according to the melody pattern. We all know, just a quick reminder, that if the note is lower than previous note, then the note to the left, you're gonna imagine and play as well. If the note is higher than previous note, then you're gonna imagine this note to the right. Okay. Oh, uh, that's what I'm gonna do precisely right now. <laughs> uh, let me open the score. Okay. Um, I'm probably gonna skip it how I imagine it, so yeah. So I have imagined separate hands and I also imagined hands together. Um, just want to say one thing that when I'm here, I start imagining and I'm also going to start playing the first note in a pijat in left hand with the last note in the right hand. So it looks like this. Then we go. Because if you don't really know where you start exactly this note, then in fast tempo it will bring some unintentional tension. <laughs> Unintentional tension, yeah. Uh, we don't want this. Okay, so also you want to imagine dynamics and voicing that will also uh, help you control your tone better and avoid unhealthy tension on hands when we're trying to play good quality piano. You know what usually happens either it's too soft or too loud, so usually students starting like tense the whole body trying to control it, it's gonna be impossible if we play in fast tempo. So uh, we have to apply dynamics. And for piano, when you imagine uh, violins, for example, in piano, simply decrease transparency level in your imagination without reducing the size of it. So not you just reduce the violins to one tiny small violin. No, it's just like in a graphic design, you would move the button, you know, to choose the percentage of transparency of the image. So choose like five, ten percent. <laughs> Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Just give me a second. Imagine everything in soft. All right, I'm done with this. Going to voices. The voicing simply imagine melody notes in front of you. It's still piano, but because you are right beside it, you can feel it more intense. That's how it works. So it's not like you're gonna smash melody and chord and the rest you're gonna play piano. <laughs> no, it's simply different. Okay, so let me just uh, give me a second. Let me mention too. Okay, done. So, um, um, if I actually just practice to myself, I would also include harmony over here, but um, it's not ne really necessarily, so we're gonna skip it. So, um, 
Now, uh, let's go to the next step, playing. Uh, first, let me just show you what is written actually on the screen regarding the uh, hands arrangement, because I think it's really helpful. <laughs> mm. So, if, oh, as you can see, this D in the beginning of the melody, I'm thinking with my left hand, then like this. Okay, then the next. Mm, also, I'm taking with my left hand just because it's right here, so I don't need to make any even movement with my left hand. So the same here, and at the end, uh, I'm taking this D with my right hand, and then, then I continue, and then five. So now regarding movement. So after we imagine everything, we probably want to play it <laughs> with correct movements. Um, and basically, the way you measure the movement of the sound, the way you move your wrist. Match the wrist movement with the known direction. Move gently without any tension. At the last stage of practicing, this movement will be remained in muscle sensations only and won't be visible to the eyes. This will keep your wrist tension free. And a missing fingering in the score before starting playing. While the wrist movement is matching the known direction, the elbow is moving towards the new position on a circle note. This will release tension in hands and improve speed and accuracy in leaps. While touching the keys, you touch super, super gently, like uh, you're touching a butterfly, like you are touching a flowers, <laughs> like you are petting a bunny. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely necessary to keep our hand light, empty, nothingness in hands. Oh, and regarding the elbows, you can see the red circle. This is for elbows. So if you're going higher after the circle, then you move your elbow to the right. You're going lower, you move your elbow to the left. Now, in the beginning, it's kind of easy. Okay, so we move left, we move right, we move left, we move right. Don't play with any articulation so far because we have not done it yet. Um, filter it out, you know. We have not finished with this. We have not started uh, yet staccato internal singing, so you are not obligated to do it right away. Um, so you see here, I'm moving my wrist and elbow right away because I'm going down with my right hand, and then the right hand here. Um, you see guys, we are encountering here counter motion of wrist and elbow. Starting from here, you would move your wrist to the right and then move your elbow to the left. Move your wrist to the left, move your elbow to the right. Wrist right, elbow left. And it's like all the way this way. So uh, I just want to give you a little suggestion. When you move your elbow, move it quickly. Don't just like, you know, I'm playing a slow tempo, so I'm moving it slow. Now, it's not gonna work out this way, um, then you're gonna play faster. So, even if you play slow, you can still move elbow quickly. Boom. Boom. And then try also to hold the note, you know, to break your arms in two parts. Um, as soon as you start moving your elbow, the purpose of the, the elbow leads your, your hand. So as soon as you start moving elbow, you just let go your note. Okay, so I think that's clear. Let me just give an example of how it looks like. 
again, um, if you're just a newborn in this, you can separate, you can just first make movements and then play everything while imagining every note. Every step you imagine, you touch the key. Next note you imagine, you touch the key. So now I'm gonna just combine it and this is how it looks like when I just imagine notes in timbre with dynamics and voicing, um, playing with correct wrist and elbow movements. And by the way, about voicing in the beginning, I think I would voice um, our fifth fingers in both hands. So I think that's really cool. And again, you can join with a pedal right away. Not a big deal. So. And then I would also imagine this rest as a silence. The music doesn't stop on rest, it's still silence. You can still imagine it. Okay. Next step would be adding intonation and staccato. Sing in between notes with a glissando and resistance. Keep the same sensation while singing out loud only notes. While playing, keep singing the same way internally. It is possible to sing the same way while playing fast passages. Internally sing with the energy of weight. This is how it sounds without weight versus with weight. Such singing will sustain transferring of weight while playing, bringing more freedom and power to your voice and hands.
Articulations are the variant of intonation, where the principle of singing internally in between notes with a glissando resistance remains the same. In every type of articulations, the first part of the interval is sung with resistance, but the second part is varied. In staccato, extremely accelerate the speed. In tenuta, move fully down with weight. In accents, mix staccato and tenuta, bring speed and weight at the same time. So, as you can see, we're going to intonate every distance with the sandal, then speed up, and then movement of the nose. So, for example, here. Um, okay, let me show you here. Here we go. And um, that speed in my vocal cords will control muscles of fingers in the palm, so my hand could still stay loose, yet I would have exact amount of healthy tension to produce perfect staccato. And uh, well, I must say, it always feels so amazing to play this way. So um, again, he would talk about the quality of the sound, so you don't have to just play short because, first of all, it creates unnecessary movements in hands that prevent you from fast tempo, obviously, and second of all, it creates unnecessary tension in hands that, again, prevents you to play in fast tempos. So, um, let's see how it just uh, looks like. <clears throat> so now I'm going to play with the same um, goals, movements, imagination, including intonation, weight, and staccato. And also, at the end, as you can see, um, over here, I know in my edition there is a small accent, so I will go with the accent um, articulation. So the next one would be adding musical speech and um, I always try to intonate at least the melody fully with understanding of musical speech. Ability to feel a difference in singing different intervals will let us pre-feel through intonation the distance of every interval much more accurately. That helps mind and hands to faster prepare to the intervals, as I have said before many times, if we can't feel fast while playing, we're not ready to play fast. Feel the difference in sound while singing with intonation these intervals.
and it will help us amazingly here when we're gonna try to achieve accuracy in big leaps. So basically when you go here, that's what, what I do, I intonate octave, second, okay maybe left hand I don't really care, but then third, third, So this is how it looks like with musical speech. And I always take a very slow tempo to feel everything. Like under magnifying glass. So ready to move on to phrasing. Phrasing is a structured intonation, breathing, where smaller blocks with more prominent sections are united into larger blocks with more prominent sections. Use intonation and weight in phrasing to make energetic crescendo towards more prominent sections and blocks. <laughs> While practicing phrasing, take a little break, a breath after every block and slow down towards the main interval in a motif, the main motif in a phrase, and the main phrase in a sentence. Let me just give you a small uh, perspective on what is written in the score. So one bar slur is motif, uh, two bars is a phrase, four bars is a sentence. Uh, so precisely what we have here is small in the beginning one phrase slur and then two sentences. So this is how phrasing works here. When you drop energy in the beginning of every slur and uh, then you kind of make energetic crescendo towards the end of the slur, you let your hand muscles breathe. And this kind of waves not only helps musical part of your playing, which is obvious, but technical as well. It becomes much easier to speed up and to sustain effortless in playing uh, because you're always um, on and off the tension in your hands, like inhalation and exhalation. That's how it works. Uh, so let me just show you how I'm going to play by motifs. Uh, maybe I'm even going to stop after every motif a little bit. Oh yeah, one more time. Um, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing to say one more time. <laughs> um, when you make phrasing and you make this energetic crescendo, you always want it to control the dynamic with your imagination. Because energetic crescendo will always have tendency to bring up the dynamic of crescendo as well. And that's not what is written in the score. So what we need is to 
feel energetic crescendo through intonation, through horizontal line, but to control uh, the dynamic, which is piano, all the way with our imagination. So even when I'm playing here, and I'm making this crescendo towards the last unison, I'm still able to play it in this piano dynamic. Okay. But inside myself, I feel it. And muscles will uh, respond to this as well. Okay. just finish first with spreading and then I'll tell you something else uh, important thing okay so now we're going with phrase um, so the first phrase is gonna have three motives and as you can see I just felt like making middle motive more important and in the next phrases uh, all the way um, second motive is gonna be more important but in the last one when I'm coming here Dissolving over there, I felt like making the first motive more important just uh, based on the harmonies. And then we kind of resolve it, fading away. So I felt second motive is kind of natural to feel less. Okay. So that's how it looks like with phrases. sentences it's obvious as I said in the beginning in the beginning just freeze and then two sentences and because we're kind of going down I felt it natural to make first phrase more important in the sentence in both sentences first phrase is gonna be more important okay let's skip this beginning <laughs> nobody cares about that <laughs> Time and tempo mean more than just the speed of music, it's a part of the character of music. After choosing the pulsation, connect time to the musical image of the piece, and if the image of music is joyful, feel and describe the pulse not as just slow, but calm and peaceful, not just faster, but lively and exciting, not just fast, but energetic and bright. Feel time while playing always following a phrasing line to sustain the flow of playing. 
Okay, now uh, on to image and time. So before editing time, I would really suggest to play at least once, feeling how you express vibrations of musical character through intonation in between notes. So to find the character of music, um, I mean, we all know how to do it, just need to listen to harmonies. Okay, this is minor, but that's not the tragic minor as D. but it's kind of beautiful because it's in another wonder place, like in another magical world, something like this. So it's kind of sad, but at the same time it's beautiful and magical. So that's my image. Um, it could be different from yours. <laughs> so now when you play, you simply tune into this image first and just try to feel it in the distance between notes when you sing, when you play. So it, you can play very slow, but every time I'm going with intonation, I'm kind of in this image. And it does make all the difference. You see, I cannot talk whilst but I'm playing because I'm singing a lot. <laughs> heartbeat, timing to this musical image. Um, for example, if we are still playing in slow tempo, then I would feel beautiful image of this music. And I'm gonna pulsate by every quaver, so it's gonna be six uh, beats in my bar. So I'm gonna, I think it's even just too fast. So, so it's not just beat for me, absolutely detached from any mu musical image. It's a musical image that has this pulsation, this heartbeat, and it's quite relaxing. So I'm playing with musical image and time, following phrasing, following imagination. part. So now we're going to learning part. And here there is really nothing to be afraid of. Um, no accidents, nothing, because you simply know the reason why something happens and you know what to do to not, to not let this happen. <laughs> so that's why there's no anxiety on the stage of increasing tempo and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So you're going to start with uh, taking small part, uh, let's say a sentence, and play it five times in slow tempo, five times in moderate, five times in fast tempo. Before every, before speeding up, go to next level, always take five seconds, go to the image and feel time on a new level. Don't just speed up by moving your fingers faster. Um, and that's how it looks like. So let's start from, I'm gonna skip the first beginning, okay? So let's start uh, with first sentence in slow tempo. <laughs> God, my pedal is always going down. I mean, I know some people like actually everything on pedal, but I don't much. 
So I'm going to focus better on this fourth well thing. So let's play a second time. Okay, let's pretend I pass all five times. Go to faster tempo. A little bit more lively. Let's do the second time. I always have problem. For some reason, I want to go down with my right hand, but I have to stay there. <laughs> He went actually down in the mouth. Okay, uh, so let's pretend we just made five times. Let's go even faster. Let's repeat again, you know, like five times. to the next sentence and you practice the same way next sentence. I'm not going to show you it again. After that you combine two sentences and you practice by two sentences. So I mean in this case you can play the whole part. So you would play the whole part in slow tempo five times, in moderate tempo five times, in fast tempo five times. That's it guys. And uh, if you have some difficult uh, fragments while practicing this is how you need to work. So we're having a situation here, we're having some difficult fragments and uh, that's precisely how you need to practice difficult fragments. Um, there is nothing scary in it. First thing, there are two steps. First thing you need to figure out what needs to be fixed and second you need to know how to exactly learn it in the context of uh, the piece. So uh, first thing, I don't feel comfortable, uh, honestly, when I am playing here, every time actually, at the end of every uh, phrase. So I'm thinking it could be because I need to move, and it's towards my pinky. So I'm thinking that I need to move my elbow faster towards pinky, so I kind of feel it, this sensation. So every time I'm going to go to fifth or sixth or fourth, I'm going to move my elbow faster. Also, again, to make it even more precise, I'm going to apply musical speech. So I'm going to feel even better intonating this fifth, sixth and especially fourth up. Uh, this is how I think that will fix the problem. So let me think. Let me try. A rocket with my elbow. <laughs> oh, I think I'm playing the wrong note. Yeah, okay. Alright, so uh, next thing, I'm gonna practice it. So when you practice, make sure that you are repeating enough amount of times in different tempos. So let's start with slow tempo. Oh, actually, um, uh, well, okay, uh, so let's start with slow tempo. Um, I'm going to first feel pulsation in slow tempo and then play. <laughs> repeat it 
like five times, not gonna do it right now, but basically it's what you do. Then you go faster. Again. God, I'm playing wrong note. Okay, then I'm going even faster, let's say. Good. So after that, I'm going to start learning backwards. So I'm going to add one bar before and again go through all the layers of tempos. And again, first, please feel tempo, um, then play it. So let's see. Let's see. Five times and I go faster. Then I go in fast again, repeat five times and I go again faster. Something like this. So let me just illustrate you. Uh, I'm gonna play in slow tempo. Well, okay, everyone can play in slow tempo. Let me show you in moderate tempo. Okay, for example here, I'm sorry. I miss octave, so I'm gonna if I would practice it separately. Would feel octave better. Okay, so let's try again. Huh? Challenging parts, and you just calculate every movement, and then you practice it patiently. I don't feel much hard in this music, but I I think it's kind of fun in a moderate doses, you know. <laughs> so that's the reason I don't want to practice this. I don't want to record every day the video. Mm -mm, no, this this melody is too catchy. Okay. So that's precisely how you work, and. Um, in my next video, I will go on with next part and just show you step by step again the same way. Uh, all right, enough for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye. tell myself move elbow faster <laughs>
how it works. <laughs>